Okay, welcome everyone to our third part and the final part for our Insomniac philosophy, uh, which is an English translation of Insomniac philosophy. And uh, now we have one additional moderator here, our friend Raif, Hello. who will be doing his PhD in physics. And we have our three special guests over here. Uh, we, they are the participants of the International Philosophy Olympiad. And the third and last question for them is that, what do you think philosophy could do for the society? So, uh, the first session, uh, what's your name? Amir. Amir has started it before uh, first, and then Justin started it. Now, Leah will start first. So, Leah, what do you think philosophy can do for our society? Uh, I think it might be quite controversial, but I think philosophy is a way to gain awareness. And, like, you know how, how there's these videos about how marketing companies are using advertisements to trick your mind? Mm -hmm. And knowing like the techniques they use is not as will not stop you but from falling prey, but it will help you like Recognize gain awareness it. and like Recognize help build a defense against it. Mm -hmm. So same with philosophy. Philosophy, like all these different views and mind mindsets, can actually help you build awareness of the world mm -hmm. and help you like defend yourself against propaganda. Mm, okay. Um, what do you think if? Uh People think that you are spreading some uh, dogmatic uh, ideologies to the people. So, if they have perception on that on you, so I think that's a problem of like the philosophy community as a whole. Because what? How do you differentiate genuine thought and dogma? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you finish that answer first, and then you uh, deal with that question. Uh, which one? Uh, you finish as answering that first. Yeah, the, the, the one I told you. Like, well, yeah. what do you think? Like, if the society thinks that you bring uh, some dogmatic ideology on, on them, so I think that. Well, what What would you do? Well, as a personal, personally, I'm a person who values my life, so I, would, I might keep these things to myself. But however, if it's like on a on a larger scale, I think it's like the philosophy, the philosophical community of that of that society's problems to deal with it. Because you can't you can't deny that those ideas do exist. You can't just erase those ideas entirely. Ideas are bulletproof. The skull is not, but ideas not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, so uh, next I mean what do you think philosophy can do for our society? Philosophy as a whole, in my opinion, would make us more wise and more aware of the circumstances that we're currently living in today. Mm -hmm. Currently, we are living in a capitalist economy. I assume everybody's aware of that. And so a lot of things, uh, we might not realize the systemic issues that go on with it. So, like systemic issues such as racism, poverty, discrimination. Right. Well, a lot of people would like to say it's soft, ever since laws have been put into place. What a lot of people don't realize is that the systemic conditions, for example, like the recent Baltimore riots, um, have shown that the conditions, the, the condition, the, the systemic conditions are still there. Discrimination based on race, gender, uh, sexuality, mm -hmm. um, class, and so on and so forth. Right. But the problem is philosophy can't build rockets. Philosophy can't build rockets, but it can build the principle to build rockets. Oh, okay, right. So, with the idea, it, it, it like, the, like the engineers will be the ones to build the rockets, but us, the physicists who create the idea of rockets in the first place, mm -hmm. they show that rockets are possible. Right. Yeah, that's me. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you have a physicist over there. Okay, Mr. Physicist. He's, doing, he's doing brain theory, by the way. It's groundbreaking research. <laughs> Well, uh, the thing is, uh, can you shape reality on your society? Yes, you can. Real society is a very fluid thing. Okay. Um, right. And if enough people care, you can you can eventually change it. Keep going. If enough people care, caring is the most important part because you need to create a consciousness within the uh, within the people of such philosophies. Then they can finally then the changes required. Mm hmm. Because change does not happen in a vacuum, it happens in society. Okay. What if change happens in a vacuum, like in outer space? 
that's not, we're talking about like uh, perfect vacuum and other things like you. Is, so, is it a theoretical? Basically theoretical outer space. Vacuum? This is question is not, okay? <laughs> I mean like uh, fully automated luxury gay space communism and all that, but this, we do not literally want communist revolution in space. <laughs> well, wait, oh no, oh no, oh, 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 oh. no. Don't you, think, don't you think your overview is too optimistic? I mean, I mean, now we okay. We postulate that the society is problematic, right? So <laughs> we are a bunch of weird philosophers. I mean, we we suppose we, we are philosophers. Uh, armchair philosophers, weird people talking about the society. Do you think first would the society give a shit about what we are talking about? <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's the most important. Let's question. take uh, the example. They of... might not give a shit, but they might get two shits. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. What are those shits? I mean, like. Uh, the po like you're assuming that <laughs> like again you assume like in, because like you made the assumption that philosophers like are all ivory tower pie in the sky kinds of people when in fact not like let's take for example everyone's favorite bearded philosopher, philosopher um, Karl yes. Marxism. Okay. Right. Uh, Marx, Marx. Even though time and time again pundits have said his ideas are dead. For 160 years, Escort. his ideas have been said to be dead again and again and again, and then he comes back like a zombie. <laughs> so it's called a zombie? Okay, alright. So let's not debate whether Marx's ontological status whether, is zombie yeah, or not. Whether, whether, okay? He's obviously dead. Uh, the, his ideas never die. They, they live so as long as they have people thinking about them, discussing them, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. They will because again, you uh, they remain they will remain in the consciousness. It just it just takes the right people to influence the public to believe in such ideas. Right, right. That's a good point. Okay, yeah, good point. So yeah, thank you. Now we go to our last uh, Justin. guest for today. Justin. So Justin, uh, why do you think? Uh, what do you think? Philosophy can help society. Help the society. Well, uh, I like the philosophy of subjects, so I guess philosophy can actually improve the fundamentals of every subject. So the improvement will be drastic and not just minute increment over the years that actually doesn't make much difference at all. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you shake the very nature of the fundamentals and actually gain an improvement, it will be leaps and bounds and the, our, our society our society as human, human can enjoy the fruits of the... Uh, the, the improvements mm -hmm. as, as we humans are in of the labor as we humans <laughs> inherently want one growth and and improvements in our life and mm -hmm. so on and so forth in everything basically yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think I think philosophy also helps to develop one's individuality okay. right. mm -hmm. because as when society learns about these philosophies they say oh there's all these different ways of thought even controversial ones, even ones that could probably get my head chopped off. Mm -hmm. But they exist, and maybe I might agree with this. I don't agree with this, and I realize I'm develop, and we realize that we are developing our own philosophy, mm -hmm. and that's Boy. how we, and that's how society, Boy. each individual society gains individuality. Mm -hmm. right. They develop their own philosophy. Thinking process, you mean, uh, and conclusions. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, we're going to our physicists. Uh, yes. This this final question. Love philosophy, is guys. Is for our, is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For our yeah, sure. Yeah. From the perspective of a physicist, okay. what do you think philosophy can contribute? What is contribution? Well, philosophy and physics is like um, a god and a man. Dead and dead. Okay. Yes. Dead I, and I, I, I personally. Uh, you I, feel like the man or the god? <laughs> I'm the man. You know? the man. I, I'm the messenger. And Double day. We have we have God. So <laughs> so this these philosophers like they, they have they have this called <laughs> abstract thinking. Is it also that, that that they give you new ideas about how you perceive the world. Right. So we currently like using our own reality and we try to uh, bridge the the one that we have. To the new ideas, mm -hmm. we're not mm -hmm. completely like just disengaged. Right. We're trying to build the bridge between them. Mm -hmm. So when we bridge, make a bridge, basically we try to put all of these new ideas into what we we're making now, so that we can make things better. Mm -hmm. But in my perspective, though, we we have um, things that we want to have like a bigger picture about universe. So especially like when we're dealing with. Um, uh, fundamental physics like uh, uniting the forces of nature 
including the gravity and the rest on the tree, um, which is uh, electromagnetic, uh, weak force, and the uh, strong force. Mm -hmm. So in fact, that um, it's because that we want to change the different perspective. This is what like um, we can see. We have new ideas such as the, um, you know string theory that they predicted. In, they have like twenty six dimensions. So and um, even like they predict in the multiple universe as well. And it's mathematically valid and this is like very interesting point for, for us because like when we grasp this uh, new concepts and we try to do it experimentally, we basically can alter so called the reality. Okay, if our it, understanding yeah. of reality, how we construct. Yeah, my, my, my reality is like the way how you understand the nature mm -hmm. in terms of uh, natural sciences, not, not the social view whatsoever. Okay. In terms of like how you perceive like um, what atoms are made of. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are atoms are really made of, um, it's just atoms. Mm -hmm. Or they have like another small portion of atoms. Okay. So right now like, we have a new idea is that atoms are made of, made of quarks and quarks, uh, sorry, atoms are made of uh, protons and neutrons. And protons and neutrons are made of quarks, and quarks are made of strings. Mm -hmm. So you can prove that if we prove that strings existed, we might change the new perspective in physics. Mm -hmm. Because like in string, like basically we we have like there's so many other possibilities. Mm -hmm. So we call it the string landscape. We have about ten to the five hundred possibilities, which is that you have like five hundred zeros, right? Possibilities that uh, describe just our universe. Mm -hmm. So I would say that like. Philosophy is really important to us, uh, especially when it comes on like we want to improving things that much better. Mm -hmm. But uh, in my point of view, like it's initiative between uh, these people like to engage um, all of these fields, not just being um, you know with themselves. For example, philosophers just be philosophers; they just hang out with just philosophers, and physicists just hang out with physicists. Mathematicians have mathematicians. So they should engage with this dialogue so that they get some connections, you know, the bridge between them. So you make new things. That's how you materialize things. Mm -hmm. So if you don't collaborate, <laughs> things not gonna work. You know? mm -hmm. So that's that's my view. Like, so you have to collaborate with all of these fields so that your field will be enriched. All of us will be enriched. Yeah. Philosophers, we, we got their benefits. We got benefits. Even the the people as well. They yeah, will not look at that, look us as like crazy maniacs, you know. Yeah. You sure? Uh, <laughs> you sure? Yeah, they, 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 they label us maniacs as well. Yeah, we are all sure? weird people. Right? Yeah, they, they call us weird people. Yeah. But if we engage with them and with us as well, so we have no problem. So, so thank you everyone. Uh, this is the end of our third installment of Insomniac Philosophy, a translation of Insomnia Philosophy. Uh, first, we thank uh, our three special guests over here, Ame, Leah, and Justin, our participants for International Philosophy Olympiad, and our physicists over there, <laughs> which suddenly become our fourth uh, respondent for today, uh, Mr. Is it due to some of our, you know, uh, accident happened? <laughs> Define accident. Define accident. You are an accident. Prove it. Okay, so thank you everyone. We meet again in the next series. Thank you.